For the third installment of my adventures in Greece, I headed out of Athens along the coast to the seaside resort of Sunion, where high up on a hill at the edge of the cape stands the proud temple of the mighty god Poseidon Pontemedon, the lord of the sea. After a quick moan about having been robbed the day before, we'll get stuck into some history. So, having been robbed yesterday at the Parthenon, I try my luck today at a different temple, this time the temple of Poseidon at the sea resort of Sunion. Absolutely, exquisitely beautiful here. I'm here with Michael from Ancient Greece Revisited. We're gonna do a video discussing Poseidon and other matters. First, I'm just gonna climb up the hill and admire the temple itself, which is not hard to do. It's much more agreeable here in terms of the crowds because there's, we're not in Athens, it's actually on the peninsula south of Athens and it was built uh, here by the Athenian state because it was a way not only to worship Poseidon but also practically to keep an eye on their enemies who would have to go past this peninsula going between uh, Greece and Asia Minor. Uh, there's a lot of traffic and even today a lot of people sailing in this area. There, there it is, the temple itself. Yeah, there's no chance of me being pickpocketed here, uh, I don't think, because um, there's not very many people compared to uh, in Athens, which was ridiculously crowded. So if you are visiting Athens and you want to come to a beautiful temple up on a hill, while the Parthenon is, is very impressive, the Temple of Poseidon is also impressive and the views, instead of a urban landscape, you get beautiful views of the sea, panoramic on all sides, and not so many crowds, it's not so hot, and no pickpocketing migrant gangs, as far as I know. I still got my, I was just double checking, I've still got everything. Uh, well, luckily there wasn't too much money in the wallet when it was stolen yesterday, so I got away with, uh, just having lost my driving license and my bank card, um, my wallet, and a bit of cash. But uh, yeah, it could have been worse, but it did put a bit of a dampener on what was otherwise a wonderful day and a, an incredible experience of seeing such a temple as that. This approach feels very similar. You're ri rising up higher and higher to the temple of the gods. Hard to imagine just what it would have been like originally. There's some augmented reality apps that help you to um, see how it used to be. I haven't got one, but yeah. Wow, what a great thing. And the views then, just as they are now, reinforce the glory of the sea. Your impression is very much that the sea is a wondrous and powerful force. Poseidon himself must have been very pleased. Great Poseidon, hope you will allow me to stroll around your temple respectfully. Njold, as he's known to the Norse. I think I prefer it here to the, to the, the Acropolis. If for no other reason than that there are no bloody thieves. The sea is also a major factor in that valuation. That's enough of me moaning about pickpockets. Now for Poseidon. He's well known as a god of the sea and as one of the main 12 Olympian deities. However, he sires famous horses such as Arion and Pegasus and was associated with earthquakes. So the sea association was actually a later addition with the result that he usurped previous Greek sea gods such as Nereus and Proteus. It's possible 
Poseidon and Zeus were originally the same god until they were divided into brothers sometime in the second millennium BC. So he was likely originally a sky deity associated with horses and earthquakes. This explains his epithets. Poseidon Gyanokos, the holder of the earth. Poseidon Enosigaos, the earth shaker. Poseidon Hippios, of the horses, creator and tamer of horses. This impressive bronze sculpture of Poseidon was made around 480 BC and was found in the Gulf of Livadostra. Some people got angry when I said in a previous video that Apollo was associated with male homosexuality. Well, Poseidon also did such things in a couple of myths. I think these myths probably relate to some kind of Indo-European initiatic tradition which became integrated with the pre-Indo-European homosexual customs of the Minoans. Poseidon fell in love with Pelops and carried him away, later giving him the boon of skill with the chariot, as well as a chariot drawn by winged horses. Poseidon also loved Caeneus, who, according to Apollodorus, was born a woman, but after laying with the god, was granted the boon of being turned into a strong man. According to Ken Dowden, Professor Emeritus of Classics at the University of Birmingham, both myths could relate to an initiatic tradition in which boys were feminized prior to emerging as adult male warriors. This would also link Poseidon to the prehistoric cult of the youthful warband. This temple at Sunion was built between 444 to 440 BC during the ascendancy of the Athenian statesman Pericles on the site of an earlier archaic period temple. One reason for the choice of the site was strategic as a means to protect Athens from attack by sea. The proximity to the sea also makes it a suitable location for worship of a sea god, and the Greek affinity for the ocean is a natural consequence of the geography of the region. One can easily imagine how the equestrian Indo-Europeans, adapting to the peninsular country with a sprawling archipelago, adopted the ocean as their new step, and thus their horse lord warrior god Poseidon became a sea god. The octopus was a popular decorative motif as far back as the Mycenaean period, 1600 to 1100 BC, the Bronze Age. This Athenian sculpture from the second quarter of the 6th century BC depicts a lost myth in which Heracles fought the sea god Triton. It was a popular motif in art. If you want to see some more of my trip to Sunion, don't miss the video I made with Michael of Ancient Greece Revisited. It's on his channel and I'll put a link up at the end. Thanks for watching Survive the Jive.